This is a quick video over parallel reactions. So what a parallel reaction is, if we have some initial reactant A. So A for a parallel reaction means parallel reactions, whoops, means that A can either go to B or C at any given time or C. So the reaction of A going to B is, is governed by the kinetic constant K1, and A going to C is governed by the kinetic constant K2. So if we were to write the reaction rate of B, or the production of B, RB is equal to K1 times the concentration of A. Concentration of A. Now let's say the order of, of A for a reaction B is governed, or is alpha 1. So it's A to the power of alpha 1, and the reaction rate of B is equal to K2 times the concentration of A to the power of alpha 2. So the order of the reaction is alpha 2 for the reaction rate of C. Whoops, that's supposed to be C. Reaction rate of C, or the production of C, is governed by K2 and has the concentration of A to the power of alpha 2. So if we were to write the reaction rate of A, before if it was just one single reaction, it would just be equal to, just be equal to the reaction rate of B. But now we also have C C being produced, so now we must add in that. So it's equal to the reaction rate of C as well. So the production of B and C, or the reaction rate of B and C, will give us the reaction rate of A. So now if we just plug in what we have here and here for RB and RC, we get K1 times the concentration of A to the power of alpha 1 plus K2 times the concentration of A to the power of alpha 2. Now something that's really big in reactions is yield. Yield. And we want to find the yield yield of B. Now there's two ways of doing this. We can do the overall overall yield and you see it looks something like that of B. So if we have a batch system that would be the number of moles of B all divided by the moles of A consumed. So it would be the moles of A initially minus the moles of A afterwards. So if we have one mole of A consumed but we only get half a mole of B then our yield is only 50 percent. So to get a high yield you want to slow down um, the reaction rate of C. You want to slow, slow this down as much as possible. And we'll talk about how you do that in a little bit. But right now that is only for a batch system. So that's batch. Let's do a CSTR, the yield for a CSTR, or a plug flow reactor, or a plug flow reactor. So the only difference is for a CSTR or a plug flow reactor is it's now the molar flow rate of B, all divided by the molar flow rate of A initially, minus the molar flow rate of A out of the system. So that's how you calculate the overall yield for a CSTR or a plug flow reactor or any system that has moles flowing into it or out of it. Now the next thing we want to do is find the instantaneous yield. Instantaneous yield. Instantaneous yes. yield. Yield. And basically it's just we don't have the little tilde on top. So if we want to find the instantaneous yield of B, at any moment, how much of B is being produced relative to A being consumed? Well, that's just the reaction rate of B, RB, divided by what A is being consumed at any moment, RA. Now we can rewrite that, we can rewrite that as just simply, it's just simply plugging RB plus RC and for a negative RA. So this now becomes the reaction rate of B all divided by the reaction rate of B plus the reaction rate of C. So if we were to plug in all this data for the instantaneous yield of B, if we were just to plug that all in, we would now get K1, and what I mean by that is just plug this and this in for RB and RC. So we'd get K1 times the concentration of A to the power of alpha 1 all divided by K1 times the concentration of A to the power of alpha 1 plus K2 times the concentration of A alpha 2. 
So that is how you find the instantaneous yield of B at any moment inside the system. So that's the instantaneous yield. Now another really big thing that's really important is selectivity. 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 So again, there's an overall selectivity. Overall. So the overall selectivity is usually written as something like this. And it is equal to, and it's got to be B over C. So it's just, it's the moles of B divided by the moles of C. And that's for a batch system. If we had a, a CSTR or a plug flow reactor, it would be the molar flow rates of A, or the molar flow rates of B, all divided by the molar flow rates of of C. And that's just the overall. Now if we wanted to do the instantaneous, instantaneous S B over C is equal to the the reaction rate of B, R B, all divided by the reaction rate of C. Now this is a little bit more fun. We can actually play with this a little bit. So what we can do is we can say the selectivity of B, C is equal to K1. So all we're doing is plugging in, plugging in this for RB and this for RC. We get K1 times the concentration of A to the power of alpha 1, all divided by K2 times concentration of A to the power of alpha 2. So now if we remember some basic power rules, if we have B to the power of 2 divided by B to the power of 3, this simply becomes b to the power of 2 minus 3. So now, if we instead say, if we have it, or if we, have, if we know that alpha 1 minus alpha 2 is greater than 0, what this simplifies down to is, is k1 divided by k2. We're just going to make this a little stronger. And what we're going to say is, we're going to say this is now a, so the concentration of a. Again, this is only if it's positive. So the concentration of A to the power of A. So if you have this situation, what you want is you want the concentration as high as possible because now we're looking at this number divided by a constant. So if we make this as big as possible, if we keep the concentration as high as possible, our selectivity will be extremely high. So what you might want to use is a, a uh, plug flow reactor because it has it keeps the concentration of A as high as possible or a batch reactor batch so those are ways to keep the concentration very high it can also have the pressure high pressure so if it's a gas system you want high pressure and that's only if alpha 1 minus alpha 2 is greater than 0 so now we want to look at a system where maybe alpha 1 alpha 1 minus alpha 2 is less than zero. And what we're going to do, we're going to call this B. B. So in this case, the selectivity would now be B over C is equal to, is equal to K1 all divided by K2 times the concentration of A to the power of B. So in this case, we want the bottom number to be a very small number. And since this is a constant, the smaller we make the concentration of A, the lower, the more diluted the concentration of A is, the higher the selectivity is going to be. And just to point out, selectivity, since these can never be negative numbers, selectivity is either through, is 0 through infinity. So it can be any number between 0 and infinity. It can never be a negative number. Whereas the yield, you can only have 0% yield through 100% yield. Through 100% yield. You can't ever have 110%, and you can't have a negative percent yield. So those are two, the two cases I just wanted to point out. Is Selectivity is between 0 and infinity, and yield is between 0 and 100%. <clears throat> so what are the kind of systems that we can use where we can keep the concentration of A low? Well, CSTR, CSTR, you're automatically diluting A. Remember, if you put A, if you have A at a high concentration, if you have pure A, and you put it into a CSTR, well, you're automatically diluting it. So CSTRs are good to use when you have alpha 1 minus alpha 2 being less than 0. When alpha 1 minus alpha 2 is a negative number. We can also add in inerts. 
inerts, or you can use low pressure. Low pressure. So the last thing I really want to point out is, is the instantaneous yield for a CSTR, CSTR, the instantaneous yield is equal to the overall yield. The overall yield. And I'll leave you thinking about that. I guess I'll point it out. Remember, for a CSTR, the concentration of A is always constant. So if we were to draw a CSTR, here's our bucket. We have concentration of A not going in initially, and this is being stirred, and it's perfectly stirred. It has some concentration of A, and it's always constant. So that means the instantaneous yield, no matter what time or how long you've been waiting for, will always be, this will always be a constant number. A constant number. So if this is a constant number, that means what's coming out, the molar flow rate of B relative to the molar flow rate of A changing, is going to also be a constant number. And these two, these two in that case, are equal to each other. Only for, only for a continuously stirred tank reactor. So that is how you calculate the yield for parallel reactions and the selectivity for parallel reactions.